Hello, everyone, and welcome to Marvelous or the Death of Cinema. On this episode, we take a look at a franchise that we've mostly neglected up to this point. It's X-Men. Well, not X-Men. The branding isn't in the title. Dark Phoenix, starring Sophie Turner. Wait, it's not? Uh, it's not. It's just Dark Phoenix. It's in the opening. It's No, it's in the... T- Opening titles. It says X Men Dark Phoenix. Yes, it does. It's not in the title of the. It's not in the title of the movie. They made a it's point not, of saying they dropped no, yeah, X Men from like, the title. Huh. Yeah, not in like any of the posters or any. But in the movie itself, the title is X Men Dark Phoenix. I distinctly remember that. We we watched this movie together last night, and we're already forgetting. It's, if you're wondering about the quality of this movie, uh. They didn't even have the, the 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 they they dropped the title like halfway through production and just didn't bother to change it on all the marketing material. They uh the title of uh, the 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 X Men franchise is a, a signal from the the uh, white hats in the deep state to uh, all of those investigators of elite gender inversion. Uh, just just yeah, letting them all, know what's it's up. It's all of them. It's all. Of it's them. all of them. They're all they're, they're all they're all mutants. <laughs> <laughs> that Charles, would be, Xavier, that would be Charles very, Xavier School for Exceptional Gender Inverted Young Children. That would be a very funny way to just like get rid of the mutant minority metaphor is if it now becomes a QAnon metaphor. <laughs> it, it would be funny if you just have like people that just think anyone famous is a mutant. You know, it's just like like a, they start doing the charts and like analyzing body positions. Like, what, what What's the deal with Carrot Top? He's he's. He's clearly a mutant. They kind of do that in the lead up to Days of Future Past, where, and I, I don't know if they've ever done this in the comics, where they imply that JFK was a mutant and that was why he got shot. I don't think they've ever actually done that in the comics, but yeah, they imply that his like that he had like powers of persuasion. Mind you, this is a, a guy who, if you've ever heard him speak, you'll realize that he was actually mentally severely mentally handicapped. And, yeah, he like, sounds like me. Yeah, he 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 comes from a from a far off savage land known as New England. He was, he was also just, just ripped his shit on sedatives and stimulants. And- it's, it's so funny that he was just in like, he I, I, he just had like some kind of like chronic illness that just like required him to be on both meth and crack and like fucking heroin at the same time. The- you don't really get a lot of those diseases anymore. Oh, yeah, I guess he's... <laughs> I guess maybe that was his mutant superpower was uh, having to s- smoke crack for the rest of his days so, <laughs> so that his back would work or whatever. They, like, removed one of his re- vertebrae. They, so the doctors removed one of JFK's ribs so he could suck his own dick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Just like Marilyn Manson. Yeah, he was... Uh, oh, God. It, when, okay. they, when, when you hear people talk about JFK and Marilyn Monroe, they're actually having a stroke. And they're they're confused, and it was actually JFK and Marilyn Manson. They would, they uh, they would mm. both suck each other's dicks, or suck their own dicks in front of each Wait, other. Wait, did, did you say Marilyn Manson or uh, uh? Yeah, no, it was it was Marilyn Manson. They would hang out together in the White House and suck their own dicks because they both got their. <laughs> The ribs removed, and then they were, yeah. But uh, yeah, how old was Marilyn Manson in 1963? Was he even born? Oh, shit, I don't, I don't fucking know. I, uh, I don't, I don't know a single goddamn thing about Marilyn Manson other than like the fake ribs removed story and the fact that he's like a. Shit That's like a little ass baby, man. <laughs> it's like at, at most, like if, if if how old is Marilyn Manson? He had, he had time travel. I thought like, you were just confused and meant to say Marilyn Monroe. No, I'm doing a bit. No, you know that. Don't you know that story? No, I know that story, that but I just I thought you were trying okay. to segue into Marilyn Monroe because that's the one JFK actually fucked. No, I was doing a bit because I said that, that was the bit. I said yeah. that JFK got one of his ribs removed, and that's why he was always in pain. Yeah, yeah, but how old is Marilyn Manson? All right, oh, yeah, Marilyn abort- Manson was born I'm, I'm in 1969. I am aborting. <laughs> I am aborting I'm, this bit. How how is it that you're you're the most sober person here right now? Yeah. And 
Uh, uh, <laughs> this, is a, this, actually, is a, this is a disaster, not unlike the production of this movie. Gonna, well, we're, that's we're, the we're, bit. We're, that's the that's the real we're, bit. That's the, this is a train wreck. Every episode, every episode mirrors the movie we watched. The the, the, the a, a tightly what's focused. The, uh, once the podcast cr- crosses a thousand dollars a month, we're all going to get breathalyzers installed in our computers. And we, <laughs> we won't be able. But like they're like the like, I just had a splash of, of, of cream liqueur in my coffee. Just a little bit. There's you know. like a, there's like the opposite of I do. I've been drinking Moscato all day since I fucking got off work. I cracked up. I, I I chilled that bottle all night, and I was like, "Fuck yeah, I'm gonna watch. Uh, I'm gonna make some spicy ramen, watch The Flash, uh, read some X Men, and fucking eat uh, eat spicy Laogan Ma ramen and drink pink Moscato." I'm I'm cracking a, an ice cold uh, cerveza cristal. Cerveza cristal. That's our, actually our first sponsor. Uh, we'll be <laughs> yeah. They don't give us money. We'll be we'll be um, editing. But, I don't even think they're around anymore. I no, don't, probably I don't think not. That's a, no. I thought I first saw those the 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 beer ads inserted into Star Wars. I thought they were just a bit somebody did. I didn't realize they were real. Ads. Okay, apparently, <laughs> apparently, Cerveza Cristal is still around. Cerveza Cristal. Wow. I mean, I that's that's uh, a, a nice long lifespan. <laughs> Okay, Stu, I think I think we probably need to address something here as to why we didn't do any of these new X-Men movies originally when we had the chance. Well, yeah, this is all your fault. To which we're going to have to go we're going to have to go back and do them when we hit 2020 now. Because I I think the consensus was like we were mostly focusing on mcu and dc stuff proper in like the early days of the show and this was like a weird middle ground thing well the thing about x-men was it was it was mostly self-contained uh up to a point to its own thing um it wasn't quite a cinematic universe it's like, it like no. kind of too incoherent no, even for a cinematic universe um uh, but it but it was also just it started like all these movies are still basically continuation of of the two thousands Brian Singer ones, and that was just yeah, it was yeah. just kind of like already as it turned out midway. It's like the Transformers movies and stuff, where it just it, it was just um another thing that just felt uh, it just felt a little too ancillary, and also just not uh I just wasn't like I just really had no particular interest in watching them, but uh, yeah, uh, we'll we'll have to circle back around on them. I haven't actually seen like X Men one or two and in like a really long time. Now. These these movies are really weird because they're kind of they're kind of like the last movies that that existed before endless cinematic universes because they're they're all just like separate franchises. Like the Deadpool movies, they sometimes reference the other movies, but they don't like like Colossus isn't like fucking like hanging out with Brian Singer on his private island, you know, in Israel. Uh Yeah, no, because he's not underage. Yeah. He's a well, Col- Colossus fucking, is a is a good a good Soviet farm boy. He's he's like Soviet Clark Kent. He's <laughs> Colossus which is very funny because uh he is actually going to pull like a top 10. So I I've started Stu on the on the the X-Men comics, the Claremont X-Men comics in about like 5 years. Uh Colossus is going to pull a real shithead move uh in in the in regards to uh sleeping with women. Uh also no, he was he was a minor. Oh, uh, because I I I I do I do like that they're just their their Soviet Union character is just like just the, the earnest farm boy. It's it's a- <laughs> Oh no, he's he's awesome. He Colossus is even even in spite of the fact that he Broke up with his like sixteen year old girlfriend uh, to uh, f- fuck an alien on a dying planet that was made by like a baby. Uh, even though he did that, uh, he's still the all time goat and like one of the mo- only like moral X Men <laughs> that, that <laughs> actually exists. Well, the X Men are very funny because it's like everyone everyone that's like never read an x-men comic is like they're like gay people and then like they're like they will do they just do eugenics experiments and like fucking race wars like every six months they're like bad people it really is a metaphor for uh 
Yeah, you want to finish that bit? <laughs> I there's just like three different directions I could take that. Um, okay, well we should we should the direction we should take this in is towards the conversation of the movie that we watched last night. We watched a movie we recorded last night. A commentary. We did. Yeah, yeah, we recorded a commentary because I remember again. That. This is the third, fourth. No, this is the fourth movie in these like new X Men movies that started with. First class, third or which I've fourth, seen most of on cable. Third or fourth, depending so, on whether or not you count Days of Future Past as a as part of the first first I, I class think, trilogy. I think you or do, the yeah, trilogy. You gotta, yeah. yeah, I guess. So I we I was just like you know what fuck it going completely blind to this day. The only X Men movies I've seen is mostly first class, just because it was on FX yeah. a lot for some reason, like two thousand ten. Yeah. Or, no, to, that movie came out like 2000, in 2012. 11 or 12, 13, yeah. whatever. Who cares? Whatever. That one's like the best, the most solid like X-Men movie. Logan, watch that for the show. Deadpool stuff counts, I guess. Yeah, no. But Deadpool, I've, 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 I've not seen any X-Men shit. Deadpool absolutely counts. So, I, yeah, I, we just went into this completely blind. And well, you just, just like Michael Fashbender. You you see him and you're like look, Michael Fashbend me over. He's hot. I <laughs> I I know there's some sus shit about him going around, but he shows up in this movie and he's wearing a, a tight Chris Evans style thermal long sleeve, and I'm like, ooh, ooh, why can't the movie just be all this? But uh, uh, in, rice cracker ass boring movie. Uh, mostly what's supposed actually, to be the, the, Genosha, I, which is I very finish? funny. Sorry. Can I finish? It's, yeah. it's it's Women's History Month. So that's okay. why we're talking about a man. And that's why we're talking about a man. Well, that's why we're talking about uh, Dark Phoenix, Jean Grey. But no, I the the crux of this movie is supposed to be bad bitch goes nuts, goes crazy, and I love that kind of shit. And it's also just easy to be interesting. And this movie is just. A rice cracker of nothing. It's, it's such a non movie. Is, is, there's, it's, it's, there's, uh, yeah. there's no difference between this and Captain Marvel, which is conceptually very interesting because at this point, the MCU is seen as this prestigious kind of institution, and whereas these X Men movies are kind of B tier. Yeah. They even have that same, like, a loose, like, 2019 pop liberal feminist thread about, like, like a like a barely developed gesture at this idea that like your emotions make you powerful because like it's it's a throwaway line it completely throwaway line yeah but it's like they're like gesture it's like it's it's a ge it's like this gesture it's well that's that's what they do with this stuff it's, is you it's not even it's it's barely a gesture and like a a, a like arm well, it, kind of being lifted towards an attempt like not even it's Less effort. Oh yeah, well, it's it's you plant the vaguest, yeah. the vaguest impression that there might be a theme, and then you whip up the think pieces, yeah. to get the audience that gives a shit about that stuff to see it without upsetting anybody that doesn't want to see it. Um, Survey uh But it's like the same. It is like the same thing where there's like a guy telling you what to do, but then you learn actually no, you, your emotions are good because. Uh, controlling your emotions is masculine and that's bad and having emotions is feminine and that's good um you gotta love the gender essentialism of this stuff it's like really uh really really yeah. coherent and and liberating for anybody this movie's really funny but, uh, because it doesn't really have scenes uh in fact Stu, <laughs> why don't you because this is this is a movie that you could basically just summarize in about like 15 seconds why don't you do a condensed plot summary for us okay all right, so and I won't interrupt uh, because I get to talk for like fifteen hours about the X Men later, so I'm gonna be good. Jean Jean Grey is a, a psychic mutant baby, and uh, she she crashes she she crashes her family sedan and kills her mom and. You think she killed her dad, but her dad actually lived. He just didn't want to have a freaky deaky psychic kid anymore. So he so he just had them tell her she's dead, and he shipped her off to uh, Professor Bald's school for freaks. Professor Bald's school for fucking squirters. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Bald ass pussy. Fast forward to the year 1992. Uh, it doesn't look like 1992. Nobody's dressed no. like it's 1992. No, no 
effort uh, at all. It just it, nothing looks like it's 1992. Um, uh, I think I even saw some like modern cars in there. Uh, anyway, uh, the X Men uh, go into space to rescue some astronauts, and then as you know happens in these kind of stories, a, a cosmic cloud of nefarious something uh, shoots on down and hits Jean Grey and gives her the Phoenix Force. Um, and the Phoenix Force gives her BPD. They never call it the Phoenix Force in the movie, by the way. No, they don't. This is this uh, the Phoenix Force. This sequence is probably the most accurate to the comics in the movie. It's really weird. There's like 30 minutes of this that is like a like. Right, hold on, hold on, hold on. 45 <laughs> seconds ago, what did you say you were going to not do? I'm not interrupting. I'm not diverting. <laughs> you are, you're exactly interrupting. You said this was going to take 15 seconds. <laughs> Cerveza Cristal Cerveza Cristal Cerveza Cristal Continue <laughs> Okay, okay So um, uh, She gets blasted by uh, Space God BPD uh, and then meanwhile, uh, Jessica Chastain with um, uh, Mia Goth eyebrows is hosting a party and uh, shape-shifting tree people come out of the woods and like just kill everybody and assume her form. Uh, and they start doing like body snatcher shit. It just doesn't yeah. matter for half the movie. Yeah. Um, and then Dazzler shows up. Anyway, uh, I don't know. Jean Grey is just kind of freaking out about having emotions. Uh, and then... She goes and finds her dad and uh, I don't know, the, the, the drama in this movie is so flaccid. You just kind of like can't she goes, process what the emotional stakes yeah, are supposed then, to be because nothing happens. Um, anyway, she kills Mystique. By, but, you know, in that like, oh, I was too powerful by accident sort of way. And then she goes to Genosha, which is where Magneto is like building Israel for mutants. And it's just like a stack of uh, it's just a stack of shipping containers in a field outside Abbotsford. So it's actually um, it's actually yeah, we were all like, what the fuck is this? It's it's better architecture than than fucking actual Israel, except for all the shit that they stole. Yeah, it's a mutant commune. Yeah, it's just better than actual Israel. Like, like, as far as I can tell, they didn't like, you know, commit a genocide to make room in that field. No, actually, which if I it's mean, in Abbotsford, the work was kind of already done for them by the british genosha but, uh, in the comics like was doing a genocide to the mutants and so they just like killed the 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 crackers you know and then they, oh, uh, oh fair enough yeah they like a haiti yeah kind yeah of thing. no it's, it's it's actually much more like mutant haiti krakoa is mutant israel so um she goes to see magneto because she's like help i'm all fucked up and uh they play tug and then well he can't really help her and then some like army guys show up and they're like they know they're fighting Magneto but they still just like brought guns like that's gonna work yeah. anyway yeah. <laughs> uh, Magneto and Jean Grey have a tug of war with a helicopter uh, which is really funny and then she just kind of leaves um, and then I don't know just like a, anyway Magneto goes after her, the X Men go after her. they they kind of fight for no reason in a nondescript location in a park. Uh, or in a street near a park. And then uh, Jean Grey meets Jessica Chastain, who's a, a shape-shifting tree alien who who wants the Phoenix power because it wiped out her home planet or something. Anyway, oh, they dude. hug and they kind of look like they're going to make out, but they don't. And then they kind of split the Phoenix power between them. And then uh, Jean Grey falls asleep, I guess. Uh, and they end up on a train. There's a big, bad, shitty fight on a train. Uh, with the not shape-shifting reshoots. tree people, absolutely not reshoots. It, no, it, was, it actually wasn't reshoots. It was, uh, it was. I looked it up. It was uh, supposed to be in space, and they just like they were like, we we have to make money off this piece of shit. Yeah, it 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 really sucks. It's like every, everything in this movie just kind of how ha- it's, it's one of those movies where it's talking about where it's like things just happen, mm-hmm. and because it's just this continuous stream of things happening without a lot of like up and down or dynamism, like nothing lands. You never feel any of the drama or any of the action, which is something that you want in an X Men adaptation. Anyway, eventually Jean Grey wakes back up and she's like. Um, well, you know, I killed Mystique, so I need to die, but I'm going to redeem myself. Uh, and anyway, all of the 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 all of the like real evil has been displaced onto Jessica Chastain, so I can fight her um, and die in the process and just be a, a phoenix in the sky. Uh, Professor X retires to play chess against Magneto in France. Um, 
the end. They were in oh, also, Paris. Also, uh, Ty Sheridan from Ready Player One Ugh. is Cyclops, and, and he's, he's just like lips. fucked up looking and weird. And I don't want him. I don't <laughs> I, want him in my movies. I don't like Get him the hell out him. of here. He's no good. We don't want him. It's it's like it's like they tried to make a hot guy in a lab, but they just fucked up. They fucked up a little bit. <laughs> they the, fucked up the sliders on the Oblivion character creator. He just looks wrong. Some of the genomes were a little a little gooey. He looks wrong. They fucked up. Send he him looks back. Like, he looks like you tried to make a hot guy in Oblivion. <laughs> like, yeah. like, you ever tried to make, or like really any Bethesda, sorry, I have Bethesda games on the mind for no reason. He looks like the potion uh, seller guy. And like, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> with Bethesda games, it's really hard to make a hot guy because their idea of a hot guy is just like a gay man with an eating disorder that like, that also has like six packs abs just like sprayed on and he's like got long hair it's like it's like fabio if he had no, AIDS, he, uh is there no idea for no he looks guy. like if like if you if you've ever seen like a fish that just has like uncannily human looking lips and that's the vibe he gives i yeah, yeah get yeah. him get him the fuck out of here i don't want to see him no there's a there's a specific scene there's a scene in this movie because cyclops and gene gray are like a canonical couple with well, each other and you're gonna piss off so many people by saying that Stu 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 turned Tex Avery wolf for, for a little second because Sophie Turner got her yum yums out kind of well, she was, a, she a she was wearing theater. a tight white she's shirt she's wearing a tight white point. shirt really the, and, and then Ty Sheridan there's, there's walks in and just of... like licks her face and it's just like uh uh gr- gross we are we are an anti Ty Sheridan podcast by the way we don't we don't like the look of that guy i'm sure he's fine no something. personal beef with him i'm sure he's a pleasant person to be around i just i go to the movies to see beautiful I, people he's not a good he's not pleasant to look like he's he's not a great screen presence like you could you could be fucked up looking if you can like actually act and have charisma. I'm but, sure he's uh, got he's got to be good in some. There has to be like some movie he doesn't suck in because we're basing. I just, this, I'm not like enjoying his presence on the screen like at no. all. And we're basing that. Well, we're basing this off of like the the lowest rent X Men movie that we've watched to this point. Which which costs two hundred million dollars. Like a, yeah, and, and you feel like it feels and, like a cheap. Like it feels like they threw this out there for like sixty mil, and but no, they spent a two hundred mil and then ninety million on promotion and distribution. <laughs> yeah, it's it's insane. This is two hundred million dollars, and literally the worst Spielberg movie. So like maybe our frame of reference is is well, is negatively polarized okay, but through to, our experience. To touch back on the two hundred million dollar budget. In addition to at least what like ninety million dollar marketing, so we're we're gonna get into the because way more interesting than the substance of this movie, which this movie is just anti climax, like no climax whatsoever. No. It's just flaccid. I was the whole pissed. Way I wanted through. them to go to the there's, fucking. There's nothing moon. big that happens, and so it's insane that this has a two hundred million dollar budget, and the biggest set piece they have is a train thing at the end, which is just pulled straight out of Deadpool 2. There are multiple set pieces in this movie that I've seen in other movies we have watched for this podcast as recently as 2019 it, this it year. It really feels like, like I know this is becoming a very quickly becoming a cliche, but it does feel like a movie assembled by an algorithm, like even more so than the other movies we've watched that feel like this. Yeah, um, I mean, this what, this movie opens on a flashback to a car accident caused by a child just like Shazam. We get the train set piece and then at least two or three of these boring street fights. I mean, even the space shit, what they did in the Fantastic Four movie, uh, the Jessica Alba one. I, I will say uh, at least that the the opening spaceship thing conceptually a little different i haven't that was seen the closest this movie got to clo- working cl- it's also like the best the special effects look the special effects are yeah. all over the place in this movie yeah uh, oh my god yeah like shot to shot it varies so much in quality from like pretty good to like sub buffy tv show yeah morphs. yeah sometimes sophie turner will be looking like she's part of the aquaman cast with just the the diffuse hair that's always moving and it's just it's just very ugly video game esque sort of a fact. It just it's Oh, that no. is unfair to video games. Which is unfair to video games, but yeah, it's 
there's just there's just so much of this movie that when you realize it costs two hundred million dollars, you just have to question what the fuck is going on. And part of what was going on was there was the Fox merger with Disney, which had a big role in yeah. how this movie played out, at least. Well, it it essentially, you know, nobody knew. Yeah, they kind of you could you you could kind of take it as a given that Disney had no interest in the X Men franchise as it was at that point. Yeah, they 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 were going to sit on it and then rework it into something else. Uh, and all of the mark the entire marketing team and pretty much everyone working at Fox had no idea if they'd still have a job. So they were either out the door or on their way out the door or like pretty distracted and then they're left with this movie that's like what is this movie because they're not going to make more of them sort of uh, like, we don't, like we, we don't know what this is we don't know where it fits anymore uh so you just had like a really messed up like like a like a expensive but muddled marketing uh for the movie like hellboy this is like a uh a deeply flawed movie that like if they made like one or two different decisions, it would have been like a slightly less also bad movie. You know, like they, if you look at the, we looked a lot into the production for this. They wanted to originally do two movies. Uh, they also wanted to, they, they shopped it around to a bunch of directors after they realized they couldn't get Brian Singer back because he did a shitload of rapes <laughs> to boys <laughs> Yeah. Uh, also, apparently, he was just a not showing up. Yeah. Uh, during the shooting of Apocalypse, too, he like was just not showing up. He didn't care. Yeah, about because he was X-Men. raping underage boys. Yeah. It is like, like <laughs> that takes up most of Brian Singer's schedule. To be fair, yeah, the man's busy. He's in demand. There's, there's really, there's. It, I, I, I don't want to say I feel bad for them, but like. They fucked up. They 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 fucked up, and I wish I could have gotten to see the actual version of this movie. You know, like I, f- I feel like from what I was reading, it seems like Simon Kinberg, the writer director, who's been writing on these movies, who's a co writer on X Men Three. Yeah. Although he's one of those guys that like wasn't happy with the end result because that also was a tumultuous production. Uh, and he's been co writer kind of on all the other X Men movies or writer up to this point. And then he was kind of he was filling in for Brian Singer and Brian Singer just wouldn't show up for work on Apocalypse. So they just said, "Okay, you you make this one." And it seems like this like he's he's on good terms with Chris debut. Claremont. Yeah, he's. On- it seems like he wants he likes the X Men. Yeah. He wanted to make a good X Men movie. He just one doesn't have the juice, and no. two is just way too much of a company man to like go to the mat yeah, uh, uh, to yeah. fight the studio on anything. Also, there's no flair. Um, this this is the kind of movie that could have been made by literally anybody. Also, they, very yeah, totally anonymous. Yeah, they, the, the the closest it comes to having style is just aping the singer. They stuff. shopped uh, it around to a bunch of different directors, and I guess they like if you were common, they like they they both didn't want to spend money to try and get like a real director in, but they didn't want to just scrap the movie. So eventually, they just said, "Hey, sign." and you direct this so i do almost like kind of feel bad for for simon there he's he's kind of the most blameless person in this uh because the entire company was just collapsing around him i feel like if if they just sat back and let him cook yeah they would have spent less money and made more money it wouldn't i don't think the results would have been amazing (laughs) yeah but they probably would have been fine yeah no he wanted Uh, to bridge these movies into the deadpool movies by uh introducing colossus uh like like this was going to be the movie where colossus that from the deadpool movies would get his like origin uh in this one they wanted to get olivia munn back as psylocke who is briefly in uh fuck i think apocalypse i don't olivia munn man she kind of came and went hey yeah uh i always get her confused with olivia wilde uh yeah me too Mostly because no, they're both Olivia hot Munn's women. the, which, the which, one which who's one, Which one to... was on G four? Olivia Munn. That was Olivia Munn. Yeah, okay. Olivia Munn is the one whose career just like kind of exploded because she attached herself to like th- like these movies and uh, fucking uh, uh, like the I think she was gonna be in like the Gambit movie like they were also gonna try and do. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, that thing that never happened. <laughs> yeah, there's just. I, I, the fox the, the fox like implosion is is kind of sad to see because like it sucked but and like their most of their movies that they were putting out at the time were bad but also like it didn't suck as much as it could it could like it, it could have and it didn't suck as much as it does now you know like 
I, I, I don't know. I, I, I think that like like Logan was a good movie, for example. Like they did they did occasionally Yeah, one put of the better out, things we've watched. Yeah, they did occasionally put out things like approximating real movies, like I don't I, I Prometheus is like a divisive movie, but at least it's like a like a real movie. They oh, seem I will, to have been I will give Prometheus one thing. It is the only movie I've ever had to pause and walk away from for like five minutes. And, oh, yeah, that's a you know me, I am movie. I am a sick That's a gross ass. I've movie. watched some sick shit. Oh, it was during the um forced uh the when she has to give herself a C section. Yeah, that ooh. Um, I, I was, was just like, watching I was someone. Like, no. I was just watching someone review a video game where they had to give themselves, where you have to give your your character like spinal surgery in it, mm-hmm. and what? Yeah, it's a it, it, I, okay. I, it was a it was like a horror. It's uh, called Stasis. more more interesting than anything in Dark Phoenix. I can tell you. Yeah, but, the movie itself is just boring as shit. Yeah. Like well, it's just in, it's not interestingly in, bad. It's it's just, just so cor- Correct me if I'm wrong. This, tap water. This this movie is also kind of was sort of stylized at least again cuz there's a whole bunch of putting aside the fact that this was originally conceived to be two movies at some point something da da da, da happened cuz this the whole X-Men reboot series is just weird continuity i don't fucking know what's going on but this this movie was kind of scaled down from what it could have been because of the response to apocalypse yeah so originally yeah originally from what we can gather from both director interviews and uh concept art uh, this movie was going to be a lot grander in scale and was kind of trying to compete with uh, Captain Marvel, which had just come out to uh, to some decent success, you know, raked in like a billion dollars. It made a billion dollars. Yeah, so. yeah, it's nothing. It's nothing to nothing to uh, nothing it, to sneeze at. Nothing to sneeze at. Exactly. Yeah. So it, it it was it was trying to compete with sort of that, and uh, from what I understand, they were going to do two films, uh, breaking at like around where. Uh, where like the magneto stuff happens uh in this and they were going to it was going to be a much bigger cast much bigger production they wanted to shoot like all across the world they wanted to they were going to bring back characters uh who had been introduced in earlier uh x-men movies specifically x-men first class they were in talks with january jones to get her to reprise her role as Emma Frost uh, from uh, and get the 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 Hellfire Club were going to be major antagonists in the movie. You can kind mm-hmm. of see remnants of that with uh, Jessica Chastain's character, who visually she, she, looks like a lot like Emma Frost. Uh, yeah, yeah, when, you, when she first she showed Emma up, Frost. that's what you said. She was going to be Emma I, that's Frost. That's what I thought uh, too. And then I, I I completely forgot that they already did Emma Frost because like. First Class is such such a just like okay movie that I don't even associate it with the other ones. I'm like, oh yeah, that was like a like a th- like Kevin Bacon was like fucking uh, uh, Shaw in that movie, like a character that I know. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know none of you know, but uh, he's like a another member of the Hellfire Club that's really important. Um, and he actually in the comics he's the one who kind of starts the corruption of Jean Grey. The the Dark Phoenix saga in the comics, which we'll get to, is like it's it's like nicole you would love it it's like basically like an italian like fucking softcore film if it was a comic like it's like it's very it's very weirdly giallo like everyone's wearing like victorian costumes it's all about like corrupting a woman to the point that she then uh that, that you then accidentally unleash this like underlying just like insanity yeah that, that's totally that my shit encompassing uh we're gonna get you to they, they to really should have had her in the black queen they fit that had you her in the uh, black queen you showed fit. us in this movie uh, all the but no it was it was 2019 and and we we can't get any sexier than a a a, a white t-shirt fuck, a even if she just white wore t-shirt. the corset there's actually i think there's concept art of like them like like a more corset style top that she was wearing you don't have because the the claremont hellfire club is just his like literally like him transcribing his wet dreams uh, from like getting stoned and watching the British television show The Avengers, uh-huh. and 
So you don't have to do but that's that's the energy one. we need in this it, stuff. It is, is. Just everything. And, and you can, everything weird's been filtered out, and that's why these movies you can like generally you can suck. even like tone those. Like you can make them wear pants. You know, you can make them like get some leather pants yeah. on. But like just anything, because yeah, this movie is so so nothing. Oh my god! But there's yeah. just no juice, yeah. nothing. Yeah, it's brutal. There's, there's concept art that shows that there was going to be some kind of space uh, themed. Uh, climax to either the second film or the first film. Either way, that was reworked into the train sequence because it was easier to shoot. Uh, and the funniest thing about this movie, though, is the tree aliens. So, uh, oh, if you, they're so bad. So the tree yeah, alien so the- story is weird. It's one of the weirdest stories, I think. I've ever heard just yeah just this body snatcher shit happening in the background that like barely matters and like for a, like you don't even need in the movie like no, you've got no. just Jean Grey turning into the dark phoenix is is enough drama for no, one but story. I'm, just there. stick with that but I'm 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 happy that it exists because I get to talk about the batshit idea that Fox was going to run with when they made this movie so originally in the original draft for this movie script these were going to be the scrolls. Now that might give you some pause. No, no, they they were the scroll up until reshoots. Oh fuck, they were the scroll. Okay, so they were the scrolls. Yeah. Up if, until... if this movie, if this movie had come out when originally planned, they, they would have been, been the scroll, scrolls. and they would have beaten Captain Marvel to it. Okay, so these these were going to have the scrolls, and that might give you some pause because. The scrolls are under the the Disney Marvel umbrella, but technically, if you look at the letter of the agreement, uh, and with what we know about like the Sony, the similar like Sony deals, uh, basically like each respective company owns all of the characters that debut in like that respective title that they own the film rights to. So that's why they can do like Venom movies because Venom is a Spider-Man character. That's why they can do Deadpool because Deadpool debuted in uh, the new mutants. That's why they can do Wolverine, even though Wolverine has been on like every fucking Marvel team on the books because Wolverine debuted in the X-Men. And the scrolls actually do technically fall under the Fox jurisdiction. And I, I think they were going to try to attempt to challenge that before the buy, buyout went through. Because the scrolls debut, and I believe issue four of the Jack Kirby Stanley Fantastic Four series. Uh they now they've never actually like interacted with the X-Men. There's like the in the in the comic, the 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 alien race that sets off the whole dark phoenix saga is the shi'ar who are like a like bird klingons or like bird romulans uh they're they're very like star trek like like avian monarchist race that uh is uh, like hyper colonialist and like weirdly like they're the birds of war yeah exactly and uh and the tree aliens are a like they're they're actually only in like one page of the Dark Phoenix saga, which is like Jean Grey like snaps and like loses control of her powers and causes I believe it's like a sun to go like Nova like four billion years too early, and she just wipes out a planet of tree aliens, uh, which are the tree aliens that this movie came with. I wonder. I don't know if. They changed it because they like they don't explain why they changed it other than they were originally going to be the scrolls and now they're not. It could have been that Marvel told them like, hey, fuck off, we have more money than you, we can sue you out of oblivion. Yeah. Uh it could have just been that they got cold feet, or it could have been that the buyout happened. I, I feel like, yeah, because cause the movie was supposed to come out in 2018. Yeah. And then it got delayed, and then the the reshoot delays went really long because they couldn't get the cast back yes. together for a long yeah. time. The and then it was supposed to come out. Principal photography ended October 2017. They didn't do reshoots until till October 2018. Yeah. yeah, so it took them a minute. And then, and then uh, they they the movie was supposed to come out February 2019, and then. James Cameron said, no, I'm putting out Alita in February. Move this shit somewhere else. Miguel, drop a, like... Because that's the goat. Yeah, so, but what I also gleaned was this, as I was saying earlier, 
This was also kind of supposed to be a bit of a course correction from X-Men Apocalypse. Not that that movie they... wasn't profitable, but it got like bad, if not mid reception. It, it underperformed. Yeah. It, and it, it only made a half a million when they wanted to make like a billion. Um, it, yeah. it had the and, worst uh, fate that any movie can have if you're a movie producer, which is a bunch of assholes on Twitter turn you into a meme. Because when they dropped... <laughs> And I'm going to go out on record and say that the the Oscar Isaac Apocalypse costume is actually pretty good. Uh, it's just that like a bunch of assholes have never actually read a comic book. So they saw that and they said it looked like Ivan Ooze. And it's like, no, fuck off. Uh, <laughs> so they, I, they, they, yeah, they, 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 they had that like big meme debacle of, oh, Oscar Isaac looks dumb in this movie. Uh, and they got essentially, they, they sort of similar to like, uh, the Snyder, the Snyder verse were like going silly. Like they got, they got cold feet basically about their own stuff and then ended up kind of self-sabotaging. Yeah. Apparently they, they thought in part um, from some interviews I read uh, that Apocalypse failed. So it was too much action and explosions and not enough like um, um, emotional connection. So they thought this, this movie was, even though this movie ended up being more expensive uh, than Apocalypse, uh, I think um, uh, was supposed to be the like the scale it back a bit, yeah. have like a more emotionally driven story, uh, and then and and they and that's why they were aiming not for a summer release originally because they're like it's not quite a tentpole blockbuster, but then yeah. they just yeah. fucked with it and fucked with it and fucked with it till they kind of got a, a a nowhere nothing movie. Yeah, it's like, oops, um, you're coming out in June now because none of the drama in this lands at all. Yeah. it's no. all been so actually, reworked and pared down. I would and, be really interested in seeing the original uh, the original screenplay for this movie, especially like the two part screenplay when it was two when movies. Was two yeah, movies, I'd be kind of curious cause... to see if anything in that works. I'd probably have scenes. Yeah, I because I, I can see a better director turning this into like, oh yeah, like the like the Jean Grey like mind fuck movie, you know? No, the the potentials. I haven't. I mean, I have to get no, that they, there's story such in the potential. comics, but I remember. I kind of really like remember it from the cartoon yeah. when I was a kid. I, I know the basic uh, arc of it, and it, you know, all the pieces are there. It's a classic for a reason. Yeah, no, it's it's a it's a classic. I mean. There's a reason that Claremont X Men lasted 16 years, and he was based and he he was only fired because he like refused to do like overnight rewrites on the comics to appease this like artist that they just hired that sucked shit. Uh, and he he then ended up coming back and doing another like three years. Like the fucking that shit was printing goddamn money for a hot minute. But we'll get to that. He yeah, actually there's a cute. Um just a quote I found that's kind of not really here nor there from Claremont where he's like, I wish when I still had pull at Marvel, I'd gotten a good dark Phoenix movie made with uh Famke Johnson. Uh, he's, he's so real. Who, who played he's Jean so Grey in the singer movies. Cause, cause he, he felt like, like, I guess he talked to her and he felt like he kind of like owed her a, a better, a, a better version <laughs> yeah, of that. I owe you. Yeah. I, owe oh, you yeah, no, he, I think he, he's on record. He hates the singer movies. He like, he thinks that they suck shit. Yeah, he's he's very forgiving of this movie. Like he didn't say it was good. Weirdly but he, he's, forgiving. His take no, on it was no, like he, it he because... seems to like Simon Kinberg as a guy, and he's just like he he did the best he could with the with all of these unnamed entities fucking with. Reading them. this production, this is like the like perfect storm of just like everything going to shit. Like I I'll give it that. I was expecting a shit show, and I didn't get a shit show. I got just. Another I would have preferred a Marvel. real shit show. Uh, yeah, no, been, like, it would have, it would have actually been easier to talk about on like the the commentary. We did, we got really off topic on the commentary because it's just like at I, a certain I point, was watching the movie. I had you guys turned down, and y'all were talking in this about movie. The nothing fucking happens. In well, yeah, nothing. Yeah, nothing movie. happens. You know, I watched, but, we watched the movie. Well, stuff happens, but it doesn't feel like it's happening. We watched no. the movie, yeah. and it it feels like a slideshow. Like it's just like. <laughs> It's just like there's no – it never pauses. There's no like – there's no beats. There's no slowdown. There's no consequences. It's, it's, it's the just... blended I've, – I've talked before about a lot of the movies we cover for this show having the, their tone yeah. has the quality of like a, a something you put in a blender where all the distinct ingredients are just homogenized into one smooth – Everything's a banana. – mass. 
Um, and this, the pacing of some of these movies, and this one's really exemplary of it, also has that problem where there's no, yeah, there's no rising, no falling, no slow parts. You know, everything just kind of comes at you with the same consistent rhythm. So it's fast paced, but also just nothing. You know, there's it's like you know, like a roller coaster. It's like you slowly wind up and yeah, then you drop, no, and you hit a loop, no and then you slow down a bit. Valleys. Yeah, there's no peaks and, and valleys. Yeah. It's like a square waveform. Which, I mean, sure, on paper, did, did the screenplay has you know that this is supposed to be like a rising action. The the big thing that like breaks Jean's psyche is her reuniting with her father and her father being like, I actually want nothing to do with you because you are a mutant You, freak. you killed my wife and you're you scary. My Please wife. go away. But no, and, sure. I don't know. Maybe we, admittedly, maybe we did do ourselves a disservice jumping into this blind and not watching Apocalypse, oh, seen, which I guess is where... I, I don't think it would have made a no, difference. No, I've seen all the other I, ones. I was... I am... I am right there. With, this movie... You know what? It 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 it, per, it it really clicked with me when when I found out this was supposed to be two movies because it's like they took the first like hour of of the first movie and the last hour of the second movie and made a movie out of those two parts. Like it's it's like when you get one of those bad two part movies like a Hunger Games two parter where they they forget yeah. that you're supposed to have a yeah. three act structure. The Hobbit. And it just it yeah. just builds and builds and builds to like a really disappointing release because you it it it's trying to hit a level of tension that it can't possibly maintain. It's it's very strange. It feels like the, like there's well, just, it is yeah. There's just shit that happens again. Like this mentality, like we oh we've got to keep people off their phones during the movie, so something always needs to be happening. Yeah. So you can never have bad news for, for that. You never have like real like pacing. <laughs> there are room temperature IQ people in the theater who are going to be on their phones regardless of what is on screen. Well, here, they don't here's care. Here's the thing. This this kind of pacing is so numbing yeah that you that kind of you you you, you, you zone out and check your phone a lot more than you would for a movie that actually like yeah there's s- s- slowed yeah, down no, and we sped were, up and went up and down and we were you know. all locked in and paying attention to this movie but there's like there were like just lines that would hit would would like hit not at all like there like i forgot that the tree people's planet got genocided and that's why they were Hunting for the Phoenix Force because it's just in like a, a, a CGI slideshow that I, I is glazing off my eyes. There's like yeah, everything everything has like equal emphasis. You can hear uh, it in the commentary. We'll like forget things that just happened. That's right, and that's not yeah. because we're 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 dumb fucking. D- Imperial Corps dumbasses that don't have you an did, attention span. You did trick me, though, humming the X-Men theme song, and I thought one of the characters in the movie was doing it. And I got really upset. That was really very funny that, that you thought that was right, yeah. I, I will say this for this movie. It doesn't, um, it doesn't do soy banter, whatever you want to call it. It doesn't do it bits did. very much. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Well, it doesn't do bits, but it does. Oh, sorry. You said bits. Yeah. Or, yeah, it's it's not it's not doing like that just happened type stuff. It's not 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 really editing, to yeah. to to do like really forced, to be fair. but it, uh, but like it, slotted in by a uncredited. Uh, but it but it c- did. community writer. Evan Peters shit. was but in we, this movie. What happened to him? Was he in the entire? Yeah, he movie? just disappears from the movie partway he, through. He, that was he so ran weird. I was like, so fast he left the movie. I was wondering if he like got knocked unconscious or killed or something. I forgot when, when he was it, in and I just this movie. It. I uh, that's the uh, that's the other. Was there a funeral for Mystique? I forgot that there was a funeral. for- No, they just threw her in the ground. Yeah, she's just kind of good. <laughs> once she's just, dead, like like nothing. Like and I said, nothing. Barry Keoghan fucked her because yeah. you're in such a because they're in such a like hurry. To, to get onto the next action beat or plot beat, you can't sit with anything long enough to feel it. Like, there's no, yeah. like, protracted scene of, like, grieving we over to, Mystique or whatever. We had to also, look like, up the in- if the movie, if the Magneto country was supposed to be Genosha or not. Because the movie just never says, like, oh, we're going to Genosha. It looks like they just went to someone's, like, backyard, like, farmer's market. It does. No, when I said a field outside Abbotsford, I was being very literal. It, it, yeah. it, it's, 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 all the locations in this movie are so bland and unremarkable. Oh my God. Which again, a lot of these movies suffer from. 
for various reasons that mostly I imagine have to do with like ease of production and ease of doing effects work is you just don't, you never have like interesting locations in these movies, even when they're conceptually interesting, they're just like bland in result. You can hear it in the commentary, but when they go there, I thought that they were going to, uh, I thought that these were supposed to be You thought they were the, the Morlocks, Morlocks at first. Because that didn't like like Genosha is like a tropical. I, it's supposed to be like like uh like a like a like Nicaragua or something. Like it's supposed to be like a like a sort of sort of tropical regime that's been backed by the U.S. into like doing all these atrocities that are kind of state sponsored, and we don't really care because the people they're doing it to are like the bad people. Um. Chris Claremont. Oh, so when writer. I when I said off mic that it was like kind of like Haiti, it it like really is like Haiti. Oh yeah, no, bit, these yeah. movies are not the the, the X Men comics are like when they're when the minority metaphor is good, it's really good, and it was really only ever Claremont that was ever really good at that stuff, uh, at like making the X Men like a proper metaphor. Like there's a there's a reason why uh, Charles Xavier and Magneto both meet in Israel. Like it's not, it's, it's not very, and like he was the one that made Magneto. Which, which is what uh, Simon Kidberg called. Oh, uh, can I read the quote? Genosha. Yeah. Can I read the quote? Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I was, I was in bed when you found this. I wasn't the one who put together the notes. This was a Stu Cole job. So let's everyone give them a round of applause for getting, uh, I for, will for absolutely doing an honor take credit to on me. Cole hasn't even. I don't even know if Cole's even looked at the notes yet. This no, was I, all I have the. I <laughs> have oh, the this notes is all up. you. I have the notes up, but this was all Stu. I did not. I I, okay. I contributed in finding the concept art, and I I did my own like personal okay, skimming well, of the Stu, Wikipedia then. sources. But okay, no, this but, was all Stu. But I was in I was in bed, and I just like my phone kept going off, and I checked what was. I guess you guys were still talking in the group chat, and then I just see this quote. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. you sent and i'm gonna read it this was to adam holmes at cinema blend simon said uh or simon says simon said what you're seeing is the beginnings of genosha that's where eric is when you meet we meet him it's like magneto's israel a land built for mutants a homeland where they can be f- safe and self-sufficient <laughs> which which is like actually he's not wrong in that sense because Claremont is kind I mean, he doesn't really talk about it a lot, but he is kind it's of... It's a very born loaded on a, metaphor at this current moment, especially. He was born on a, kib, on a, on a kibbutz. Like, he's not... He's... he's he, it, Claremont's not a woke guy. Like, he's he's not a very woke or progressive person. Like, he's a great writer, but you're not going to get, like, real good critiques on Israel from a comic book... St- a uh, company that was like 85% Jews that were fresh out of high school. Also specifically like boomer Jews too, like they're... Exactly. Yeah, you're not going to get a great... But that's fine. It's like, I don't need that. I, I don't... Yeah. There's, there's also... Great, Alan Moore has a great uh, a great one-off issue. There's actually, I think for like charity, where like Magneto just like reckons with all the lives that he's destroyed and realizes that he has done a comparable amount of damage to the world than to like Hitler. <laughs> Um, oh and my then, God. uh, there's some, there's a lot of stuff in actually in the current, uh, uh, Hickman or I guess no longer current Hickman run where, uh, they actually announce, uh, the new mutant homeland in, in one of the places they announce it in is in Israel and Magneto sort of renounces his Jewish face. There's faith there. Uh, Hickman, I don't think is a Zionist. Hickman was genuinely trying to make a commentary on there. And it was sort of followed up with uh, Al Ewing's amazing run on uh, X-Men The Resurrection of Magneto, which I haven't read yet, but ends with uh, Magneto sort of taking a trip through the through the stages of the Kabbalah to realize that uh, the only way that he can create this like separate existence for mutants that he wants is to renounce violence. It's amazing. It's great. I love I love comics. Matt, when when people bring the Kabbalah into it, you know they're fucking cooking. They're co- oh yeah. my, it was it's uh, Al Ewing's great. Yeah, uh, it, which is funny because he's not Jewish. He's like a hundred percent British. He just like thinks it's neat. Uh, oh oh yeah, no no the the like guys that get into Kabbalah are almost never yeah. Jewish. Yeah, <laughs> there's a couple like um, there's uh, yeah. uh Fuck, I can't think of any off the top of my head, but uh, I know there's some. But yeah, like fucking Bowie. 
Is David Bowie Jewish? No, da- no, no, not Jewish. So I was just, I was like of guys that were in the in, that I was got into say, Kabbalah. Because when he got into Kabbalah, that was the same time. Britney Spears was, did. That was the that same was like time. A, that was like a trend in like the early two thousands, where you'd see like celebrities with the little red twine on their wrist because they were into it. Yeah. Oh. The, the yeah. fucking. Uh, I was. I was gonna say. I don't think that David Bowie was. Was Jewish because when he was getting into the Kabbalah, he was no. one making his. Was also during his thin white his, duke his phase. thin white duke phase, <laughs> which is, uh, I hate to say it, the best bow. Station to station is the best Bowie album, and it's like station to station is incredible. But it's also like he was he was he was just channeling the 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 latent spirit of fascism in Western civilization. It's uh, uh, dude, I that love, whole fuck, period. I might, I might listen to station to station all the way through tonight. I love. That's my favorite David Bowie album and one of my favorite albums of all time. I, I have something I want to table. Uh, yeah. this, was, this was also something well, that well, seemed Nicole, to have me, you ever heard Station to what? Station, though? Uh, a little bit. A little. A little I, yeah, bit. I, I'm station overdue station. for a real yeah. listen. It's, you know what Station to Station I'm, I'm way overdue. with is, is, is even Galleon, actually. I... I, when I was seventeen, okay. when I was okay. seventeen, like all I was doing was like rewatching Evangelion, and or actually, I think I watched it for the first time, and then well, got into Station to Station. The title Station to Station literally refers to the stations of the the Kabbalah, yeah. the 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 tree of life there. Oh, okay. Um, I thought yeah. it was about go, taking the the train. Well, well no, actually, there in are... the actual song "Station to Station" it has that lyric of one one magical movement from Keter to Malta. Okay, so it's not taking the train, which is from yeah. the top to the bottom. Yeah, and then there's another train metaphor in there, which is which is a which is a bad train metaphor. It's the the no yeah the he's no, going no he's train. going from the top to the bottom of it. He's going to hell. There's it's the to, there's uh, the no no train that he also takes, which is the he, he sort of uh, there's like a couple lines that can be in, interpreted to. Uh, sort of be about like the camps. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, it's it, it's it's great because it's it like the it's it's both it's like contrasting <laughs> like like the 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 genuine artistry of like Jewish mysticism with like just the horrible underbelly of Nazism that was it, it bubbling up in America around the time. Like, and well, he was I, in Ger- was he in Germany when he was or does before he went? I to think Berlin. I think this was. Because like I think Golden that, Years also has that line like you know nothing's going to put oh, yeah. you in these which is golden yeah that's that's years. all about uh, about Weimar Germany and shit. No, no, yeah. it was, what is it? What is it? Oh no, I was trying to no, I, I was trying to remember the line the uh, uh, something for a th- sing with me, baby, for a thousand yeah. years. Like yeah, the thousand year right. Yeah. That's what the Golden Years is about. It's not about like being 40 and having a great life it's the golden years is is about the the the, the coming of the third Reich. yeah no it's uh, he was coked in, he was also coked out of his mind uh, he was zooted yeah. to another planet he was, dude. He was, was while like he, a, i think i don't think i don't think he remembers recording station to station he remembered yeah, recording say, station to station uh, yeah no it, uh, that was also while he was shooting uh uh fucking uh God, uh, what is the movie he did around that the, the time? Uh, Man oh, Man uh, the Man Who Felt Earth. Yeah, the cover of Station to Station is like a, a scene from The Man Who Felt Earth. Also, Low was recorded, I think, around that time too. Or I think he started writing Low. Low, Low is when he went to Berlin. Yeah. That's the, the three Berlin albums he did with Brian Eno. Yeah. Um, David Bowie, great artist. And fucking, okay. That's, that's oh, the yeah. watch, the, the, to watch something else is any David Bowie music video. Or per, or concert performance, except maybe dancing in the streets. I don't fucking, he, gets I'll, a little, he gets super gay with it in that. <laughs> it's it's like one of the gayest music videos you've ever seen. This song is so. That's bad. like that's like something like you it's like my so dad gay. will still complain about. It's like ah oh, that that song he did with. Uh, Mick Freddie Jagger Mercury. was so or, or, gay. Yeah, Mick Jagger. I, yeah, no, I hate that song. No, no, no. Fred, the, the, Freddie Mercury the, the, People my the, parents' the age one. love Under Pressure. Yeah, yeah no, no, Under, no, Under, Under Pressure is the cool one. Dancing Under in the Street is, is the gay Great one. Song. Under Pressure is amazing. And then, like, Dancing in the Street just, like, sucks shit. And, like, the original is <laughs> the gayest thing you've ever heard. The original is so um, much better because it's, like, black people singing it. So they, like, they, they know how to make it, like, like, gay in a cool way because they're kind of landowing it a little bit. Uh, okay, so the thing I wanted to table before we let you talk about comics <laughs> lore, I, I, I just just briefly just wanted to be because I I feel like X Men was one of those maybe not untouchable franchises, but it, it it's a been an ongoing franchise since that first one came out, give or take like a couple years break, and 
I read the Hollywood Reporter article on this. Uh, unfortunately, I tabbed out of my browser, so I don't have the name of it here for you. But yeah, the consensus I got from a lot of the marketing people was that they felt X-Men was just a surefire thing. And Which I get. They were taken aback by by this bombing. <laughs> I I, I and, sort of understand that because, uh, especially if you worked at Fox at the time, because the only reason that Fox owned the rights to X Men is because Marvel was going bankrupt, and they were like, "Do you want all our film rights?" And they were like, "No, we don't want the we don't want fucking like Iron Man. We just want like Wolverine and the ones yeah. that are actually popular." Yeah, because I think it's uh, probably easy to forget or not know yeah. the. 90s cartoon was huge. It wasn't just like a Saturday the morning kids thing. It was huge. a prime time, all ages hit. The that comic cartoon. was like the first comic to ever break like 100k sales for a single issue. Uh, I mean, it ran for 16 goddamn years. Like Claremont was was buying sports card cat. Like actually, the death of Jean Grey issue came out like right after Marvel instituted their royalty system, where if your your comic sold more than I think it was like 1500. Or fifteen thousand issues, like you, you kept a portion of the sales, and that thing sold like eighty to ninety thousand issues just in the direct market, and then probably like twice that much in the newsstands. It was like gangbusters. Yeah, in the eighties and nineties, the X Men was the biggest thing Marvel had. Actually, by far, funny probably, enough, with, the Dark with, maybe Phoenix with Spider Man among uh, like super hardcore X Men fans was like hated. It was like they. That's- Actually, that doesn't surprise me. Fans, diehard fan types will often respond with hostility to any change in the status quo. Yeah, no, in fact... They don't like it when the characters they like die, even if it's what what makes for good drama. I don't remember what animal it was, but someone sent, like, mailed him a dead animal to, like, Marvel's office. It's, It's kind of almost comforting to know that, like, a certain subset of nerd culture and fandom has just always been... Oh, absolutely. Obsessive oh and God. weird like that, even yeah. before we had the internet. No, yeah, he, had to, he was like, he like canceled a bunch of convention appearances because he was worried someone was going to fucking kill him. Like he, uh, like Stan Lee was doing uh, college speaking Six tours. Six Semper Tyrannus. <laughs> Stan Lee was doing speaking tours at the time to like hype up Marvel Comics to colleges because that was their big biggest demographic at the time. And he had to like leave an appearance early because people were like yelling at him for killing Jean Grey. Because even though Jean Grey was like the least liked member of the X Men of the original five X Men, uh, she was like sort of like the 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 team mom, so to speak. Like she had like she was considered like you know almost like Aunt May, and that like you 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 don't really know what to do with her, but like killing her off is offensive. Uh, which is why it's good. Which like is that's... oh yeah no I it, it, um, fuck that shit that shit slapped like a pimp like the. Dark Phoenix Saga is amazing. Like it's it's great. It's fucking it's great. But we'll get to uh, 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 we'll get to it. They they got okay, me on the leash well, so far. Let's take a look at the run sheet here. What else before we yeah we before, touch on the comics? We get into that whole thing, which is going to take the rest of this conversation. I'm sure. Well, I guess that that does bring us to something uh, when it comes to a film franchise. Um, yeah. You know, so we have this idea. He's like, well, you got to have a franchise, you got to have like a familiar characters or cinematic universe that so you can't just have a new thing. You have to have a hook that brings a familiar hook to bring people in, yeah. for a cast or whatever. What what causes people to lose interest in a franchise and what causes them to come back or stay? Because no one seems to have actually figured out. There's a lot of ideas about how you do that, but I think it's mostly kind of a self-establishing ideology tea leave reading honestly i think that like um the problem with the cinematic universe is the the cinematic like i don't i don't think you can have a successful like five ten movie franchise i think that it's it's like it's a, it's very annoying to talk about it because it's all like comic book people or, or like blockbuster people ever talk about but i do think that the trilogy is like the ideal way to like tell a story like a long form story Story and media in in movies, in movies. Man, yeah, yeah, probably. It's I think like you as much as you can. Do a great X Men TV show. Honestly, I think that like fucking the, the, you get like a little HBO network, someone with a little bit of extra extra spending money. Uh, what, what what if they did an X Men cartoon, but actually had like an animation budget? Or that, or that, I think you could honestly do it in live action, especially if you if you made it a period piece and like were really a stickler about like the. 
the um like all the visuals and the costumes matching because you can you can play up the hokiness of it you know like you could like yeah. the problem yeah, just with lean first, into the, with like, the artifice with like a first um, class or a days artfully. of future past movie is you can't really those those don't they don't have enough meat on their bones to support fucking aliens you know they really yeah. don't but then if you have something where it's like all right episode one there's a blue german guy the that's fuzzy and teleports and his teleports smell like farts and he looks like the devil but he's actually just like a nice catholic catholic boy and he's the best x-men character to ever be uh to ever ever exist then that can you can do aliens then like if you if you got if you got episode one nightcrawler and wolverine showing up and they're gay with each other then that can you can go to space with that you can't go to space with something like fucking well you're you're right this stuff should be a series yeah. if you're gonna do it live action then you like you lean artfully into the artifice of it rather than going for quote unquote realism. Yeah. You just have like beautiful, like, like beautiful, but blatantly artificial, like sets with matte paintings exactly. and, and yeah, stuff. The, and you kind of just make theater of it. The biggest, like one of the ways that's it's really funny to sort of see it uh, with like the, the, the critical, because the, the singer movie or the, the, the original three, uh, X Men movies like made a shitload of money. Like they were they were popular. They sort of helped revitalize like a slightly uh, on the downturn X Men brand. But the comic run that they did immediately after uh, the 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 original three X Men movies was the Grant Morrison one. And I don't and I I assume neither of you have read the Grant Morrison X Men run. But the only thing that is that is sort of held over from the the impact of the movies is the fact that like the x-men are now wearing leather jackets that say x on them sort of like they have in the in the original 2000s trilogy other than that like there is fucking there's a chinese guy with a black hole for a head named shen zorn and he's actually secretly <laughs> magneto the whole time and they're not doing that over at Fox, you know. They're not fucking. No, they're not, they're not doing that kind of shit. Well, I mean, that's how I think for for how cheeseball they are. Like, I don't know if they really succeed in like leaning into no, artifice. I think that's why but, the Deadpool um, movies people like are those so... CW shows because TV show format lends itself to that type of story way better than a movie does. Oh yeah, no, no, genuinely, like watching season one of The Flash is like a a perfectly like constructed television show adaptation of a comic book run because you have the big bad but he doesn't he doesn't really even affect the show that much until like episode 18 of 20 of 23 like you give him the last six episodes to hype up that he's a big deal threat but like other than that they're fighting telepathic gorillas and a guy named snart every episode they're not fucking <laughs> there's no damn tree aliens I mean, in this shit the, the best model for this might be Buffy which was yeah. just Joss Whedon doing comic shit but not with any actual you know licensed comic, known characters. You know what was one of the first comics that Joss Whedon did when he got into comics? He did he did X-Men, he did right? X -Men. At one point. And it's it's like yeah. it's like well liked. I haven't read it. And you can see there's a lot of X-Men in Buffy. There's for a lot sure. of X-Men um, in Buffy. A lot of urban fantasy takes a lot from the X-Men. A lot of especially if it has like an oppression angle. A lot the X-Men is like it is honestly kind of wildly popular there's a little bit of x-men in like jojo there's a little bit of x-men in like mob psycho 100 there's a little bit of x-men in like fucking uh, <laughs> uh uh my hero academia there's oh, well there's a lot there's of x-men in my hero academia, academia that is just yeah. x-men from what i've seen of it the, 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 the <laughs> x-men is like is like a quintessential text like it's it, it's a it's really just they 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 came up with like a with like a niche, like a, a niche within their own genre, and just stuck to it and kept carving out that niche. But they weren't afraid to ever break the mold a little bit. Like you know, they go to space. Sometimes there's tree aliens. You know, sometimes there's fucking bird aliens. Sometimes there's fucking uh, a, a guy named Mister Sinister, who's a gay British guy that wants uh, Scott Summers and Jean Grey to fuck so bad so that he can they can have the perfect like Ubermensch child. You know, sometimes real, real Benny Jesuit hours. Sometimes they go to a planet that's run by a fat yellow guy who doesn't have any legs and walks around in like a spider chair, and uh, he he's addicted to television. And there's a there's a guy with like three fingers named Longshot whose superpower is that he's really lucky, 
and uh he's like a space gladiator and then the, and then okay and then they eventually the x-men get turned into babies every <laughs> Every, All okay. right. Every com- well, see, that, I think that is like every comic book. Like is if JoJo. you're gonna have a a long running series like that, you have uh, a, a a core cast that you just want to hang out with for a while. That yeah. keeps going on like somewhat self contained adventures, like you know, just like good like like you say with a TV show and that. But it also like you do need to change. Like that's why I think JoJo's has had such longevity is it would change the status quo. You do an arc and then you'd like okay, we're gonna oh, bring yeah. in some new guys. We'll keep one or two guys you like and around, the, and then we'll do like a new thing. But then you'll still have these like core one elements. One of the reasons that why you, I love JoJo um, so much is it is just a Western comic with like really yeah. good art. Like it is, it is there is. There's so much of like American comics in. That's why I always get pissy whenever like manga fans be like, "No, glorious Nippon untouched for a hundred thousand years." Like, <laughs> it is really we, funny we how this- weirdly like xeno chauvinistic uh, anime people can get when it's like, no, like like all of the Japanese culture you like is Japan processing and responding to American yeah. culture. And to an extent, yeah, like and French it's, and, and that's like beautiful. Uh, oh, it's, you know, it's like such a European such wonderful stuff. things have come out of oh, that it's, cultural it's great. exchange. It's like, actually, it's like the, it's the unique Japanese culture in mind that the, the back of Gaijin g- g- cannot. It was like, like <laughs> no, no, like all this shit exists because they saw Disney cartoons and Spider Man and X Men. Yeah, and uh, Star Wars. Yeah, like, like, like no, you don't I've, have Gundam like, without I Star love... Wars. <laughs> And you don't have Star Wars with Akira Kurosawa. Like, it's been ping-ponging back and forth now uh, at this point. That's why I hate, like, whenever I, I get accused of just being, like, a like a comic, like, a Western comic supremacist. It's like, no, I read a shitload of manga. I love manga. Because for the same goddamn reasons that I love comics. Like, I've been reading fucking Silver Age Flash, and that, to me, is, like... I, I I feel the origins of JoJo within that. Like, Flash, to me, feels like JoJo fights. Like... I mean, fucking hell! Like, there's a there's a telepathic gorilla in JoJo. Oh, like, there literally is. Oh, yeah, like a, yeah, strength. Like all men are brothers. All men are fucking brothers. Yeah, dude. no, I mean, that's the thing. Manga is just comics from Japan. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> at the end of the day, it's all just men are it's brothers, still just comics, dude. I love. It. I love this shit. I love the French shit. I love the American shit. I love the Japanese shit. I love the Mexican shit. I'm a big fan of Dragon Ball. Uh, <laughs> oh, just, uh, I, love, I love there. Mexican culture so much. I gotta, I gotta finish up the Planet Namek arc. I, 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 it's been like a year at this point. Honestly, the problem with me uh, going from Dragon Ball Z to from Dragon Ball is I miss the whimsy. I miss the like. I, I, I actually like kind of don't like Goku now that he's not a baby anymore. Like I need Aww. that like. Little boy going on an adventure magic to me. You know? I remember watching the original Dragon Ball anime as a kid. It's, it's, it came on somewhere at some point, and I I remember liking it way more than Dragon Ball Z. I never liked Dragon Ball Z as a kid. I don't hate Dragon Ball Z. I, I think it has a lot. No, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Just as a kid, I think. Well, also part of yeah. it was the marketing and the like really shitty theme song they gave it in Canada and like the Commonwealth countries oh, yeah. gave it. It made it seem like it was this thing that was just like all guys screaming at each other being tough all the time and and i just just yeah, like this the, like, this just seems like it's trying so hard to be cool and uh i i, I kind of avoided it and that's admittedly in part just a, a, a failure of my part but that was like the impression i got of it and no yeah it's like i i i i really like all all the, and i feel like that's why that's part of the reason why uh, fucking these American movies are so bad is because like we're we're kind of afraid of that. Like we're kind of afraid of the all men are brothers shit. Like uh, I, this is getting way off topic, but I I, I was thinking about Max Landis. Oh and God, I, I'm so sorry. I, I re- it clicked with me. It clicked with me. Like oh yeah, like like Chronicle is just shittier. It's a guy who saw Akira yeah. and was like, I don't want this. I don't want like like cool motorcycles yeah. or like fucking like. Uh, anything actually interesting about the I want uh, disgusting any texture body in this? I want it to be like nuclear. Yeah, I want it to be like Dane DeHaan metaphors. and then like the guy from oh. fucking I don't even the other guy in that uh, Michael B. Being, Jordan, like just like screaming at each other. Yeah. While oh yeah, he part. was right. He Michael was in B. That. Jordan's in that. Yeah, I don't I don't know why I thought it was the guy who was was Neil Patrick Harris's friend in How I Met Your Mother. 
For some reason, he's the good the good psychic. In, no, they're too they're too also, old for to have been. Yeah, uh, no, I don't know why I thought it. Yeah, was Cr- yeah, Chronicle is like because Max Landis is like proud of his. I'm com- like because I'm like saying like taking two seemingly unrelated things and combining them to, to since a new thing is just a classic way to make stories. But Max Landis is like proud of himself for doing that and wants to show off that he's doing it, which is like really yeah. embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's also, and then he, but then it turns around and he's like afraid of it, you know. He's like, uh, I need to make, you know, I need to make like, for example, he ripped off uh, fucking uh, Nightmare at Twenty Thousand Feet for his last movie, where it's like literally like and a heavy World metal. No, he he, he ripped off the B the B seventeen segment from Heavy Metal. I think uh, is what just yeah, that too. <laughs> yeah. Where it's like it's like oh yeah they the this this B seventeen encounters gremlins yeah. and no one believes them it's like first of all like fucking like change your homework up a little bit dog but like second of all like uh like he's like it it, it can't even just be like like the beauty of nightmare at twenty thousand feet is it's not he doesn't like shoot the gremlin to death on the wing he just like fucking is losing his goddamn mind. It's not like, and it, it's it's a great performance by Shat. Fuck, I might I might watch some Twilight Zone tonight. I've That's actually it. never seen the original episode. I've just seen the movie version with John Lithgow uh, that uh, George Miller oh, directed. Oh my god, dude, you gotta watch. I the, should, yeah. I, I think it's up on the server. Just throw on like any. I, I gotta watch some old Twilight, Twilight Zone. Twilight I haven't actually Zone. seen very much of it. Uh, I grew up on it. It's great. It's so fucking good. I watched a, I watched a good amount of '90s Outer Limits as a little kid. Uh, I have never seen '90s Outer Limits, but I've seen the original Outer Limits, and there's actually there's actually an episode in that that uh, inspired Grant Morrison's Invisible. Oh, I can see it. Ni- '90s Outer Limits because yeah. it was on like basic cable. If you're depending on which season, which airing you're watching, sometimes you get some titties all the way out. Nice. Damn. Uh, I might check that. There's out. actually there's a there's a an episode that's anthology. based on a short story by George R. R. Martin from before he was the Game of Thrones guy when he wrote like science fiction in TV. Oh, have you ever read his superhero universe? Oh, no. Actually, my first girlfriend was really into that before I even knew it was George R.R. R. Martin. With the, the It's it's not bad. It's like it's it's a little there's like a tad bit like genericism to it that you get with a lot of like like not uh not big two superhero stuff, but it does have that that and it's I think it's actually based on like a like a homebrew game that he was working on with a bunch of other writers. Uh, I'll have to ask him when I move to Santa Fe. <laughs> oh, you do uh, that. Wait, he lives in Santa Fe? I think he's from um, Jer- No, he lives in Santa Fe. He actually, I actually, uh, I I didn't get the job, but I applied to manage the theater that he owns. Oh, that would have been kind of cool if you got that. Yeah. Yeah, he'd be like, hey, yeah, where's no, Winds it, of it Winter, would, bitch? Like, fin- finish you're going to die book, soon. You it would, but bastard. like, <laughs> you're, gonna, you're running out of time, man. You're no spring chicken. It would, but then I wouldn't be able to talk about my job on the podcast anymore because it would be so easy to dox me. <laughs> um. I would just yeah. immediately have to stop talking about my podcast about the about my job on the podcast. Okay. Did we do we have any more like comics stuff we wanted to as it relates or cuz Oh, I mean we can Yeah, no, we can go into the you comics. Can, you can go into a little bit and then I think we're done because we're done talking about this movie. <laughs> yeah, no. Was, oh yeah, no. It's, we're done so, fuck this movie. Th- for like the first like Explain, explain. The first like 30 minutes of this, like everything up to like the Phoenix Force going into her while she's in space and everyone thinking she's going to die is like a pretty on the nose like not necessarily like like it's 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 grounded because it's it's fox bullshit but it's like a decent conversion of the of the fox com or of the of the claremont uh and uh john byrne and david cockrum comics but everything after that point is just like completely different the dark phoenix saga is like is wild as hell so it 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 takes place over like several years of the comics because they this was back when writers knew how to like draw out a story by like just not by like doing other shit and then like coming back to an idea and not like uh doing like episodic bullshit where like you get like one tenth of the story at the end of every episode and then uh there's a shitty conclusion that's 
that's unfulfilling. But, um, like, yeah, the X Men, like the the story, the, the 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 rough beats of the beginning are similar. Like they go to space. Uh, it's a different reason. I think they're like fighting the Sentinels and. Uh, Jean Grey has to like pilot a space shuttle and she's the only one that can, that can like survive the, the, the re-entry long enough, but she won't be able to, to live. And so an entity known as the Phoenix force, uh, contacts her and is like, you are, you are the bravest bitch in the whole land. Uh, <laughs> congratulations. You cool. win borderline personality disorder for your efforts. And so she gets, they crash into the Hudson Bay (laughs) because uh, everything in Marvel takes place on the East Coast. And uh, Jean Grey like jumps out of the water and she's actually, she's wearing, this outfit is burned into my mind. She's wearing like, uh, she was at like a party before they like, like, because they get kidnapped into space. And so she's at, like, the club, and then she, like, rips her skirt off so that she can, like, throw hands. So she's just, like, she looks like fucking, like, like me, Tarzan, you, Jane, uh, <laughs> shit. And she's she's wearing, got this, like, little black cocktail dress that's all ripped up. Awesome. Big fan. Shout out to Dave Cocker. Cool. Real one. Uh, and she becomes the Phoenix. And slowly they sort of realize, like, okay, this isn't just, like, a new a new because they don't know what the phoenix force is uh they don't and they slowly realize like oh this isn't like a new persona for gene this is like some other shit because she starts exhibiting new powers originally she only had tel telep- telekinesis but now she has telepathy uh she can and her her f- powers manifest in like these like blazes of psychic energy that like comes across as fire because it's just like so powerful that it's radiating all this extra psionic energy and she gets a cool new costume uh and it's great uh and then slowly over the course of things she starts losing her grip on reality like she's she starts like being able to create psychic visions that are so powerful she thinks she's traveling through time uh and people start to notice that like hey there's this really powerful telepath on earth and First, it's the it's the Shi'ar Empire, and uh, they or actually, I'm sorry. First, it's the Hellfire Club, and they pull up and they kind of like like groom her sexual style. Uh, the the this guy Shaw and this other guy Mastermind, who's like a he looks like a French pedophile, and he he wears like a Victorian <laughs> sounds about clothes. right. It's, it's, it's just a French person, yeah. And his power is just, like, gaslighting people. Like, he can just create these, like, realistic psychological illusions. And he, like, almost exclusively uses them to manipulate women. So he, like, sends Jean into this, like, Victorian sex fantasy vision. And she's just like, damn, maybe I should become the bad girl, you know? And so she slowly, like, she changes her costume and gets more darker and starts calling herself, like, the the Black Queen of the Hellfire Club. And the X-Men, like have to like be like no you're you're gene you have to be normal like chill the fuck out lady and uh then they go into space and they fight the bird aliens and gene accidentally does the holocaust and kills like literally billions of people because she like used her powers and didn't realize that she was causing a sun to go nova and she just wipes out like an entire planet of people and so at this point like bigger powers than her are uh are in getting noticed uh, by this shit so like the space hague pulls up and they're like we have to we have to kill you because you've committed like xenocide and they uh have a trial on the moon and she's killed by like a like a laser gun turret that was left on the moon by like the kree or some shit uh and like it's such a big deal that the watcher who is like the guy that shows up when shit gets real and he looks like you uh he, he's he's the guy who's supposed to watch everything and not interfere yeah, who, who always, always interferes. interferes but in this case he doesn't interfere and his <laughs> his boy who is one of my favorite glup shit oh aliens in marvel the rigelian recorder who is this race of like sentient androids that just have like tape decks in their body that record like but they're like cosmic tape decks uh, they're a Jack Kirby creation, if you couldn't tell. And, yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and they they just show up. They're similar to the Watchers, but they just show up and they're like, 
they're like, oh, I guess it was 75 degrees outside when this bitch got fucking shot to death on the moon. Like, they, they just show up and take, like, survey information of shit. Uh, and later it's revealed that the Phoenix Force actually uh, duplicated Jean Grey's body. It did not, like, like, merge with her body. And the Phoenix Force is actually the cosmic uh, manifestation of the cycle of death and rebirth of the universe. And for some reason, it has a thing for redheads. Like, it just, they never explain why, but like. Well, I, who does it? It? It, <laughs> just, it just has a thing for redheads and then bald guys because it also created Galactus, who was the, the last is man Galactus left. Is Galactus bald? Uh, Galactus is bald under the helmet. Yeah, his real name is, uh. is Galen of Ta. And he was a scientist in the previous universe. Wait, Galactus' real name is Galen? <laughs> and so the the previous the previous uh, multiverse was was collapsing in the big crunch, which is when all of the matter has to condense into one one uh, part, uh, place in space. Uh, and he's like, "Fuck! How do I get out of this?" So he's like, "I'm just gonna like." get the biggest spaceship that we have and shoot it in the other direction of the big crunch and like hope I can outrun it. Uh, it does not work as you can tell, but the Phoenix force is like, well, I need like, I need like an avatar on like a cosmic scale. Uh, so you're going to be the guy that eats planets. Uh, and that's how Galactus was born. And, uh, the Phoenix, yeah, the Phoenix Force just has a thing for redheads. It also has this like this psionic realm known as the White Hot Room. That's just like a lounge filled with like hot ass redheads that the that, that are currently dead, uh, and and had the Phoenix Force at some point. Um, the X Men comics are the greatest comics ever made. They it's it's actually called the White Hot Room. Yeah, no, it's called the White Hot Room. Actually, I think that was a Grant Morrison creation. I hope that's where I go when I die. Yeah, no, it's literally like the you hang out with with hot ass redheads in like a lounge. Um, and uh, they've actually been strip mining the White Hot Room in recent comics because the the walls of it create uh, contain this like super rare substance that. Uh, uh can dissipate any magic spell uh it's just like magic just does not work when it comes into contact with it and the x-men recently colonized mars as like a fuck you to the earth because the earth was like yo dog like we like it's cool that you have your own country but like we're still gonna kill all of you uh if it's okay with the individual governments so like the u.s is like fine with mutants like they won't they're like, oh, it's up to the parents to accept the mutants. And then, like, <laughs> but, like, Russia, for example, like, Russia and, like, a couple countries in South America are just, like, doing, like, mutant pogroms and shit. And uh, so the mutants create their own homeland. And then uh, the Earth – and they're, like, uh, any country that, that wants these, like, super drugs that we're making with all of our, our high-tech future shit has to stop killing mutants. And a couple countries are like, no, fuck you. So they colonize Mars and then declare Mars to be the capital of the solar system. So uh, because all the, all the people that matter, you know, like, are on Mars uh, – all of the like inter interplanetary trade just like leaves Earth. They literally do like like moving the company to India, but for like fucking <laughs> for, for space. Uh, and yes, I don't know, man. the The logistics of that don't make a ton of sense to me. Like your 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 ninety nine percent of your consumer markets on Earth. It's way cheaper to ship from one point on Earth to another point on Earth. The mutants have have tel have instantaneous teleportation from from Mars to Earth. From et oh, uh, so, all right, all right. So well, they, fair enough. They I have, guess they have uh, right. plant based technology because uh, Krakoa, the island that walks like a man, uh, which is if you don't think that's the sickest goddamn name for some shit, get the fuck out of my podcast. And it's uh, very very literal. Yeah, like, Krakoa appears kind of at the start of what's what what, what is like X Men as we know it yes. in the, the giant X Men number one, which I read last so, night. So Krakoa uh, turns out it kidnapped all. So Krakoa shows up in Giant Size X Men number one and kidnaps all the original five X-Men and also some other ones that we never see in that comic because uh, comic book writers love to do retcons. But uh, it was actually doing all that because it wanted to like protect them from the world. And so they have a they have this mutant guy whose name is Cypher, and he can talk to any he can like his power is just that he can understand any language. He gets addicted to the internet for a while and becomes like super racist uh, because the internet is a language. And um, 
fucking he like is able to talk to Krakoa by just discovering its language and realizes like oh you want to create you're a mutant too like you're a you're deep down you're like an ancient mutant so we're gonna like live on you and create our own country but we're also Krakoa is able to grow these like instant teleportation gateways like wherever there's like soil like like fertile soil so the mutants just have like these teleportation gateways that only work if you're a mutant and they're kind of like they're a little bit evil now which is fun or they were for a little bit like they're just like we have the cure for <laughs> cancer but we're only going to give it to you we also have the cure for death too by the way but we have the cure for cancer and like aids and shit and we're only going to give it to you if you're nice to us <laughs> all right and well you got to play the hand you're dealt yeah uh, that's uh Ooh, good okay. lord <laughs> the, yeah no, <laughs> right. the, the x-men rock cock i'm gonna go immediately after this podcast read some more x-men comics love those niggas All you, right. just, they, you just that's that's why these these movies will never really no cook is because they'll just never get even like a tenth that fucking crazy no never yeah make make these movies crazy and then maybe we'll like some of these that's yeah, why, get, get nutty with it. Get psychedelic. Like Batman 2022 because uh, – Oh, my God. I had to do it. I actually – I realized uh, you had, as you, we were wrapping up the episode it. that I didn't say it. And I, 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 now at this point, you're just doing it to do it. Yeah. You know. All right. Watch something else. And you know what? I'm going to issue once once the again. Very Nicole first... has has 800 recommendations, leaving no room. Well, for I'm, gonna, the rest I'm of throwing us. a wrench into this because one of the things I'm recommending is a book. Because <gasps> you know how much I love my movies about crazy bitches with Sallow or the doing 120 bad days of Sodom or what it's no, like I'm... living with the X Men. <laughs> no, I'm going to recommend. Uh, please, this is a, a honestly, I think it's like one of my. One of the my favorite books that I've read in the last like two three years, uh, House of Psychotic Women by Kirla Janice. It's basically like an autobiographical compendium. That, of, that sounds like a character, a, a name an X Man would have. Oh yeah. I, well, it's 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 like a it's it's like part autobiography that she she uses her own experiences growing up and analyzes them through the lens of boobies that depict female psychosis and neuroses so you know you got like the classics in there persona uh just gonna just to officially put put it in the canon of the watch something else uh selection that we give out possession no that just sounds really interesting possession. I, I, no, i'm just it's yawning a great, it's because a i'm book. legitimately very tired it, it's a great book but yeah, in terms of in terms of movies, possession, obviously, if you, you want a movie about a crazy bitch losing her shit. Carrie, also just completely obvious. Okay, and, I gotta specify the Brian De Palma version of Carrie with the yeah, Sissy the, Spacek yeah. and John Travolta. If you're yeah, watching not, that TV movie or that no, one with the, yeah, uh yeah. Chloe Grace Moritz, or you're fucking up. I'm fuck, heard fuck you. I've heard that yeah, weird, the weird two thousand spirit or like like sequel is like Oh, Carrie 2, The Rage, Carrie 2, yeah. the TV movie. I've heard movie. that that one's fun. Or was that a TV movie? I've heard that that one's fun yeah. because they turn Carrie into like uh, like an emo girl and she like is like a lesbian or something. I think I, I got saw that more. as a kid. I don't remember I it very more. well though. God damn. Phenomena by Dario Argento. Phenomena by Dario Argento. Yeah. I was waiting for us to... Okay, I thought you were going to give me a response about how there's a monkey in that movie. Oh yeah, there is a monkey. The, the monkey is yeah, the monkey. Uh, <laughs> Donald Pleasant. There's some the hilarious monkey, monkey shit that in not, that movie. That is not uh, even the that weirdest is, thing that happens in that movie. It's one of them. The phenomena, even for not, an Argento movie, is fucking pretty out there. It's uh, bizarre. Jennifer Connelly controls insects and uses them to, to help solve a murder. She is kind of an X Men. That would be like a sick. She's an X Men. It's uh, an X Men movie. Yeah. <laughs> one of my favorite Glup Shido X Men is this guy Maggot, who uh, has blue skin because. Because every fucking he's also like Egyptian and like like was like uh, like a runaway like orphan like street orphan because of course yeah. he is. Okay. But his his power is just that he has uh, a maggot, uh, like a giant maggot hit hidden in like uh, in like each of his shoulder blades that come yeah. out and eat for him. Like his own stomach doesn't work. He, the maggots had the the giant maggots have to eat for them. Yeah. Okay. And the the funny I, thing about the X Men is like 
nine times out of ten you get a shitty power. Like not everyone's like that. Not everyone's gambit. Having a maggot in the, you. Most of the guys are like Glob Herman, who is like has like translucent gelatinous skin. Wait, is his name his name's Glob Herman? <laughs> his name is Glob Herman. That or like sucks. Beak. Beak who Get has of all here. of the all of the features. Beak is goaded. Uh, I will. Uh, he has all of the features. Let me guess. Of, he has a big nose. No, he has all of the 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 bird features except for wings. Like he just he got like he has like chicken wings. Like he just doesn't. He he has like a bird face. This, uh, he's a he's a bird this man, like but he can't sucks. fly. Yeah, <laughs> and he's sound. he's married to a black woman who has pixie wings, and they have a kid that has both of their powers. So it just looks like this fucked up monstrosity. <laughs> Well, what what's the bird guy's power? Like, how is that a power? What what is the utility oh, of just the, the mutants being don't a flightless necessarily bird have man? Utility. That's the great thing about the X gene is like most of the time you don't get like a cool ability. You just get like some weird shit on you. Yeah, you're just a, a yeah, you're just a guy with like extra big ears, but you can't actually yeah. hear better. <laughs> there was a there was a mutant who, and this was admittedly like a like an intentional. You just look like series. a Ferengi. There was a, a mutant in the series called X Men, the worst X X Men ever, whose power was just he blows up once and then dies. Yeah, he can blow himself <laughs> up on command exactly once, but he can't put himself back together, so he just dies. That's awesome. <laughs> it's just a. Guy. Like oh, that rocks. Uh, it's 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 like it's like like life. You don't always get the cool power. Sometimes your power is like just having like the super celiac disease. And and just for the fuck of it, because I said it on the commentary track. Watch Mob Psycho One Hundred. Jean Grey in this movie, she she basically has mob psycho powers. And so just just don't don't watch this movie. It's boring. Yeah. Oh, this movie sucks. I, I you, I don't know. The only, you, you, you kind of had all the recommendations I could think of. Um, it's kind of a pro pro of nothing. But uh, I watched uh, Mikey and Nikki the other night. That's a good great one. movie. I still gotta great see movie. that. I still. You I guys still haven't seen, seen Mikey and Nikki. Damn. I haven't seen any Elaine May. Actually, oh, I should man. do that for Women's History Mike, Month. The Mikey whole movie is, is is just John Cassavetes just and dudes. Peter Falk hanging out. It's yeah. great. Yeah, uh, and they and movie. they and they both kind of hate each other, but like in the way that you can only hate someone if you've been friends for like a hundred thousand years, you know? Yeah, no, no, fucking awesome movie. Uh, that rocks. Like, yeah, I can see some parallels, but but. Uh, you kind of have to dig deep for them, but that's a, that's a, I'm just going to pick that because uh, this is kind of like the last really good movie I saw. I guess since I mentioned it on the podcast, um, I watch something else will be, uh, or I mentioned it. Yeah. No, I guess what I mentioned on this podcast, uh, and my watch something else will be, um, uh, Jojo part five, uh, Vento Oreo. Yeah. Uh, because that's the most Jojo or that's the most X-Men of the, the uh the jojo parts like part six is close or, or yeah part six is close but part five is like the most down to like everyone dressing like a gay man on a runway like oh, the, X- I, the x-men oh, i had i had to explain oh, I got, jojo I got to, my, to my sis what did i i don't know if i did this on recording uh night breed clive barker's night breed oh you already okay. recommended I, I was, that for i did okay another episode i don't remember Oh, okay, oh Hellboy. That's... You recommended it for yeah, Hellboy. Yeah, okay, right, yeah, because Nightbreed is kind of just like X-Men, but like gothic horror, and they're literally monsters. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's the X-Men. Yeah, yeah. It's the X-Men. Yeah. They should, they should, get, they should give it's... Clive Barker another cr- crack at Nightbreed. They should make a, 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 a like a streaming series out of that or an HBO series or something. That that could that could that yeah, could go. Yeah, well that like could work. that, I, I think. think. I think Nicole, we got to get Nicole X-Men pilled. I think you would like the X-Men because it's like, well, it's just the most Italian X- it's, it's just the most Italian. Once, <laughs> okay. Once we're once we're making like fuck you money, well, I'll start. I'm gonna start just buying random copies of like Marvel Masterworks X Men and and mailing them to Nicole's house and shipping being, like, it to me. Yeah, just being like, read this shit, dog. <laughs> That's the upshot of comics. You can burn through like an issue or two in like uh, twenty to forty minutes, oh, like God, a lunch yeah, break. Easily, yeah. Especially if they're not super verbose. So it's not it's not as big it's not as daunting as it looks. Especially if you just like read one or two here and there, and you just kind yeah, of slowly no, work your way through I, it. My comic reading pacing is I, I can probably get through like five to six issues in like two hours. 
Yeah, no, comics are great. I've got to reread Nausicaa and finish the last volume of that at some I've, point, too. I've still only ever read the first volume of Nausicaa. No, Nausicaa's cool. Nausicaa feels very much like uh, Miyazaki read, read Dune and then just like did like the anti-Dune. <laughs> I had to read it for a comics class, and it was great. I had to, I, I got to take a college class on Nausicaa, which was very fun. Oh, that's cool. Because oh, Nausicaa really is like awesome. the exact opposite of Paul Atreides. He's like the mirror. Yeah, and... no, it, it's like, what if, what if someone connected with the bugs, but in like a chill, like not going to do genocide way? Like, like, a, like, a, like, a, like, a, like an just shy of pacifist humanist sort of uh thing also some no, fun mach- cool. some fun machine de- designs in that they're very like blobby. oh great great machine designs great i love the um the the the, the om- glider the omu oh, design the omu. yeah the the big the big trilobite bugs all the eyes i love the movie too like the movie i still gotta see the movie it is kind of just the oh, first man, volume mostly and then really simplified no, but i still really read, that's very this is the gayest thing i'm going to say on the podcast today but i've only read nausicaa i've actually never never seen the movie nausicaa well, i actually haven't seen that like much the, that much studio well, ghibli I've the, seen uh, the like, nausicaa movie has a sequence animated by a young uh hideaki young oh, yeah, you the can the tell only, too you the, like the, the, the big, you can the tell when you sequence. see it you're like oh yeah <laughs> The only it's Miyazaki a big sequence too. The only Miyazaki I've seen is uh, the sh- really shitty Earthsea movie that like the B crew did. Uh, oh, the, Goro! Yeah, yeah. No, the, the one God. where they they took the book that goes out of its way to tell you that like white people are like a barbarian raider r- group that live in like one corner of the world and everybody else is is like black and brown. Yeah. Uh, and then they made them all Japanese. <laughs> Yeah, there's the, I've seen that one, and, which is not uh, as bad as the Earthsea live action movie that made them all white. Uh, there's an Earthsea live action movie. Yeah, it came out in like the early two thousands with like a no budget. Um, wow, it, that's it crazy just apparently sucks. I've never seen it. I, I only actually read that book uh, recently. I read that for an English lit class. Great book. Oh yeah, Earthsea's cool. I need to read more again. Uh, oh, she's great. But. Uh, it gets memed a lot on Twitter because it's a very it's a very funny story to do like a to to incorporate into jokes. But the ones who walk away from Omelas is a great story, great little short story. All right, time time to thank the people who give us money. Let's all give them a round of applause. Yay! Yay. Congratulations! Thank you. Thank you. Da, 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 da. All right, so so I'm gonna thank everyone who's given us money since February fourth. <laughs> Thank you to Amelie, Dylan Varda, Knuckle Scraper, Awesome McCool Guy, Marcos Espino, Canty, Joel Batham, Dino Sardin, Manny, Chad O'Neill, Samarkand On Demand, Evelyn Destroyer of Worlds, Donovan Luz, Corman's Inferno, LP Gartner, Zaldine, uh, Quir- Ty. Ryan Landry, JP Tree, uh, Borf SW, Plasmas333, Jesus Christ, guys, come on. We got like, Bellarino, I like that we have a mix between Pia like, Trella, like, like Bellar- real, real names, joke real names, names, and then like, like Xbox 360 Halo gamer tags. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, Just uh, incomprehensible gamer tags. Yeah, I, I actually XX, kind of, I kind of love that. Well, here's, here, well, love here's this. Here's, love you're you going to love this. You're going to love this next one. Thank you to Throne of Boners. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, big ups to Jake Tropilia. Uh, shout out to you. Uh, thank you to Josh and Sanrio Legend. Thank you guys so much. Uh, Thank you all so Throne much. Especially Throne of Boiners. Bro- Throne of Boiners. Throne- <laughs> I see. I'm ready to go to bed. Throne of Boiners for uh, you know we're we're gonna give that that's it's that's this episode's hand, handle of the week. <laughs> yeah, that should, yeah, that should be every new subscriber we thank. We should pick, we should pick out a handle of who, the who has the best, the best one. Yeah, you have yeah. The, so you have um, the bar stu- Yeah, we'll call it the Madeline Winter Awards. Look, it's the. All right, guys. Which does so... sound like it sounds like a like a like a porn in memoriam section, like to all the porn stars <laughs> that have died that year. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, that's a very poor name. Uh, Which is why we love, it's so it. cool. we love you. We love you, Madeline. We love you, Madeline. Yeah. All right. So 
Dude, I'm so we, happy that she joined I'm the so Discord good. and was like, fuck yeah, guys. <laughs> I love right, what's, that. Uh, what's coming up next so, week here? Oh, God. So, or, uh, well, we did, I guess we did. Two weeks from now for the next main the episode. So here's yeah. a dis- yes, but here's a disclaimer. I want to, I want. I think I've said this before, but I want to say it again while we're on the air. Uh, guys, if you win the Patreon, I will DM you or email you. And if you win and you don't respond to me within three days, you forfeit your your poll. So please, please check your DMs and check your email regularly. Ideally, They're, ideally, oh, we got one. we got our um, patron raffle result, oh, didn't we? It's, but uh, so we, yeah. Well, I, so I had to pull again, and guys, I swear on my life, I am not pulling the strings behind this. But the winner is once again someone I personally know. Uh, it's WBR film critic, uh, esteemed film critic, uh, my pal Sean Burns, the man who gave me the salt burn hat that you will see me wear on stream when we play Metal Gear Solid from now on, because I think that's an appropriate place to play it, uh, wear it. And boy, was he he excited to give us something. He, he knew he, I knew he was going to give us something good. And we are going to be watching... Roman Polanski's Bitter Moon for the next Patreon raffle episode. Let's fucking go. It's times like these when I when I when I forget that we're actually a movie podcast and not a comic book podcast because I'm like I was like that doesn't have superheroes in it. Like what the fuck? <laughs> I mean, but like a certain I have super- to have an, a superhero movie. It was directed by a pedophile. I have to I have to talk about Rosemary's Baby is kind of a superhero movie. Yeah, no, it's there, a movie. There's actually like like comic books that are the comic book characters that are kind of like just Rosemary's baby if the baby grew up to like be a shit kicker. Like uh like Damien Hellstrom, the son of Satan, is literally just like, what if the Rosemary's baby baby like grew up to throw hands? I, I remember hearing somewhere <laughs> that It's Alive was supposed to be like a like a like a uh a, 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 a in all but name sequel to Rosemary's Baby. I don't know if that's true, I, I don't know, I heard but... somewhere. That movie, you you think that's a very schlocky like you know B kind of C exploitation movie? Actually, quite more thoughtful about the topic of abortion than people give it credit for. But that was just Larry Cohen, God rest his soul. Uh, and then after oh, after that, you've seen Q? we had to move. I've seen Q, yeah, Q, I where David Q. Carradine is just drunk throughout the whole thing. I'm Just, a big, you can smell the booze on him. I, I'm a big Q fanatic, dude. Where where one go, we go. Is that like the letter Q or C U E yeah. or? Yeah, no, it's 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 yeah, Q, and Q. it's about it's about like a like a. And I'm gonna butcher this pronunciation. It's about a a Quetzal Quetzalcoatl Quetzal, the. It's about a, the a ancient, it's a giant Quetzalcoatl. dragon. Yeah, it's about the the feathered dragon from the from the like fucking ancient indigenous religions. Uh, except it's like in New York and just fucking like killing people while living on the Chrysler building and it's sick. Oh, Michael Moriarty again. He he gives like one of the most fascinatingly he's, weird performances he's in the also stuff. very drunk. Oh, he's so drunk in the stuff. He's so <laughs> Rocks, weird in he's that. So cool. <laughs> he's so drunk. <laughs> yeah, the, the very drunk guy movies, but yeah, and then because we we had to shuffle something around in our schedule because we fucking did. MCU timeline. So next mainline episode, we're finally fucking doing it. We're doing Joker, everybody. We're doing Skibidi Toilet parts one <laughs> through sixty three. <laughs> I'm really scared. I'm afraid if I watch this movie, I will become disturbed mentally and uh, do violence to women. Yeah. Um, I may need an adult uh, accompanying I'm, me. I'm worried if I watch yeah, this movie. Yeah, this, this podcast I will, isn't going to be a safe space anymore. I will become disturbed mentally and do something in a... <laughs> all right guys well we'll see you next time thank you for starting the show thanks for listening have a great rest of your week Good night everybody bye Good night. bye
cerveza cristal. Look, Shout out to Jim. Hi, Jim. Shout out to Jim. Hi, Jim.